Hello, I am Paula Cabral. I am an architect and artist from Venezuela, and I'm currently living in Barcelona, Spain. Since a young age, I've been super passionate about arts and design in all scales. I've always had like a very strong curiosity on how impactful an artistic element can be. And I think that curiosity made me take art classes and test with different media such as charcoal, graphite, pastels, and oils. But also, I've tested design through jewelry. I had a brand called Baya, where I created necklaces out of unconventional materials. Simultaneously, I studied architecture and graduated. Then I moved to Barcelona and obtained my master's degrees in advanced studies in architecture, contemporary project. After that, I had the opportunity to work in renowned architectural studios and I'm currently collaborating in architectural projects and involved in explorations for wearable art forms. So I find myself constantly jumping through scales and I'm not planning to stop. But you must be thinking, what about art? Well, even though all I've done was enriching for my artistic self, and I was always drawing and painting parallelly to all that I did, I realized I was too immersed in the corporate world, so I was living in a rush. And some time ago, I've decided to focus more on my art practice, live slower, uh, just because I felt the need to express myself more freely and authentically. Is my art influenced by my previous experiences? Yes, we can say to sum up uh, in two ways reactive and active. So in the active way, my architectural and artistic background made me develop a keen sensitivity to space, light, color, and mostly conceptual thinking, which I all of that incorporate into my work. And the reactive side is that I took my art seriously because I wanted to change my previous way of living. So Before I was living in a rush, but the moment I realized that life only happens in the present moment, my work was transformed into a constant pursuit of experiences. So my work became process-oriented. I'm not interested in creating a nice work of art. I'm interested in the experience that I have when I paint. I live and learn a lot about myself and about the world in the process, and this is living. For me, the resulting artwork is just a consequence of this. I like to think that the work and the process of creating the work are extremely coherent with my way of living, how I think, how I feel, and I think that's really powerful and authentic. I think I'm pretty much influenced by the intangible things like reflections, light, space. Most of my life I lived in Maracaibo and in Barcelona and even though they are very different, they are both very sunny. So there are shadows everywhere. They have blue skies with flu few clouds moving slowly and I think I'm very captivated by those moments of calming nature. I like to think of those as compositional coincidences. And I definitely can see uh, a hint of that effect in my work. If I need to refer to other artists as influences, then I would say Sai Twombly, Helen Frankenhallen, uh, Victor Vasarelli, and contemporary artists like Carla Cascales, Celia Lees, Violeta Maya, and Aitami Armas. Right now, I'm focused in a dialogue with the uncontrollable factors that are already decided for me. What does this mean? So, for example, I use the precise size of my body to determine how far can I reach to create a certain mark. So my body defines where the mark will be. So also I'm embracing the technical qualities of the materiality. For example, the painting is finished when it dries. 
So I'm using also my energy levels and feelings in that precise moment to guide the mark if I'm angry, if I'm happy, whatever. I try to transmit all of that that I'm feeling that I'm not really controlling. So, for example, as well, I use the color that is left behind unintentionally in the brush to see what happens. So it's really exciting and I feel like a co-creator of my work. The biggest challenge of being an artist nowadays, I think that it would be having an enormous amount of information available. It's a challenge and an advantage at the same time. The challenge is to know how to filter, what to consider a good reference, a reference and what not, and also not getting contaminated or influenced by, I don't know, the most liked art. So I would say do what you feel is right, not what you think others will like. An advice for my younger self would be don't think about it too much and just do it. The only way of getting to know yourself and your graphical language is by producing, testing, and painting, painting, painting. And painting what you really enjoy creating. My work is mostly mixed media, acrylics, oil pastels, and graphite. So I'm not using anything extremely unconventional. Um, what I would say that is not common, let's say, is that I paint with anything that I find in my studio. It could be my hands or any kitchen tool or any paper that I can find. Uh, I love to test with different things. The music that I listen to when I paint, it all depends on my mood. Sometimes I listen to Zen music, jazz, or Cuban, Venezuelan rhythms. And sometimes all I need is complete silence. There's a playlist in Spotify called Global Groove that lately I listened to it a lot. The best reaction that someone has had on my artwork, I can't think about one specifically because there have been so many and so different and so special. But What I can say that is I just love when people get caught up staring a piece for a long time and after a while they tell me what they feel or the things they see that are completely different of what I thought when I was doing the painting. So I love to see the reinterpretation of other people. That's really nice. Or another thing that has happened a few times is Someone coming to me seeking for an explanation because they don't understand abstract art at all or my art. And when I explain my why and the story behind my paintings, they get super excited and I can see a small smile of enlightenment and they start having their own interpretations and start asking deeper questions. And I honestly feel honored by this kind of appreciation and being able to connect with people this way. I hope that with my artwork, people can be able to stop, stare, admire, feel whatever they want to feel, and just be present. I'm not really trying to communicate a specific message. I'm just letting out a deeper message that's within me, that I'm discovering while I paint. So if another person is moved and connected to it by making them just feel something, then that's amazing. You are all invited to visit my studio in Barcelona. Uh, contact me through my webpage, paulacabralmuchacho.com and my Instagram and TikTok, same, paulacabralmuchacho. Um, thank you very much for this interview. I hope I inspired at least one person to start their creative journey. Bye-bye.